Well, everyone, this is the last section of Math 119. We're going to look at exponential models. It's an application section uh, for the exponential logarithmic functions that we've been talking about in Chapter 9. And uh, when we began Chapter 9, we looked at some exponential functions and um, some kind of interesting equations that came out of it. Uh, first of all, you may remember the equation y equals c times a to the x. It was kind of our standard um, exponential equation. And a couple neat characteristics came out of this. The first one was the coefficient c. That is always going to be your initial value or y-intercept. Okay, that's always the initial value or the y-intercept. The a value, which is the base on the exponential function, is the growth or decay rate. Okay, or growth or decay factor, I should say. Growth or decay. I wouldn't necessarily call it a rate exactly but it it's related to the rate um, now we saw two specific types of um, financial models earlier uh, in this chapter one was the compound interest formula and one was the continuous compound interest formula they both follow the same structure generally speaking where the leading coefficient here which is now represented by P for principal, is the initial value that's invested into an account or, or uh, um, borrowed with a loan. So the P is the initial value just like the C was here. The base is related to the rate, right? There's a rate of change in here. And this base, the E to the R is really the base where T is your power. And the rate is involved there as well. Um, this growth factor um, or growth um, rate is uh, all part of the base here. Okay. So in all three of these cases you have that same general structure. What we're going to do is we're going to go uh, beyond the financial models and look at um, mainly things called half-lifes. You see in the physical world, certain um, unstable uh, um, molecules will decay over time. And they'll turn into something else that's more stable. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the equations that govern that phenomenon. Um, and so when you have something like carbon-14, for instance, which is used as a uh, substance for dating uh, old objects, if you take a sample of the carbon-14 in the object, um, you can determine, based upon how quickly it decays, uh, how old then that object is. And the decay rate is usually mentioned in terms of the half-life. Okay, So a half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the substance to decay. Right, So the amount of time it takes for half of the substance to decay. That means if you started with 20 grams of a substance like carbon-14, then in, in a certain number of years only 10 grams would be left. That's the half-life. Okay, when, it, when the amount cuts in half the amount of time it took would be considered the half-life. And every uh, different molecule 
or a different isotope has a different half-life. They all decay at different rates. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, some examples of those different rates and um, how we can use exponential models to represent them.